Hey everybody, Erica Serwin here from Pink Bucker Designs. I've got a little card for you today featuring this little, I guess he's like a river otter maybe, from the Musical Jamboree set. And I have um, brought in the In the Grove stamps and dies um, to go along with it. I wanted to kind of create a mountain scene for him and uh, that's what we're going to do. All right, so this is also a one of these split front cards where the inside, you can see the inside through the middle. We're going to use a window sheet on that. But let's do all of our stamping first, all of our die cutting, and then we can put our cards together. All right, we're going to stamp the mountains from um, the In the Grove set, and we're going to stamp it twice, uh, but we're only going to ink it one time. So first we're going to stamp it in... Um, pecan pie on basic white. And then before I ink it again, I'm gonna stamp it again here so that it's lighter. See how in the background we have it lighter? All right, now for the trees, we're gonna stamp them in Old Olive. They are also from In the Grove. And we'll just do that one like that. And then our little cute guy, the otter. We're gonna do him in Memento Black. And I've chosen Memento Black because we will be coloring him with Pecan Pie Stampin' Blends. So that's the ink you need to use when you are using Stampin' Blends. Now my Pecan Pie Stampin' Blends are running low on ink. So let's see if I can get this guy colored uh, without completely running out of ink. I've ordered a new set and they're not here yet. This is my most used color for sure. Pecan pie, I love it. All right, we're gonna just take, this is the light pecan pie, and I am using the bullet tip end. And we're just gonna add color everywhere. I'm gonna leave his little belly uh, white, but I'm gonna give everything else a full coating of the light uh, pecan pie. And then we're gonna come back with our dark and add just a little bit of shadows. Now you can try the other end if you'd like, the brush end. I prefer the bullet tip end. I feel like I have much better control when I'm coloring. And I get out of the lines really easily when I'm using the brush tip. So I save the brush tip end for large spaces when I'm trying to fill something in with color. All right, he's got a little hand right here, a little arm. All right, now I'm gonna take my dark and I'm gonna add color down here and along the bottom of his tail like that. I'm gonna do some right here under his arm, kind of go back like that. Uh, maybe on the side of his face like that. And then of course this arm right here and a little bit down that way. And then you can take your light and just blend it out towards the center. Okay, and it'll all blend nicely. Now, because I'm running out of ink, my colors aren't gonna blend quite as much as I want them to, but I promise you it works. Okay, very good. Now for his fiddle, I'm just gonna take my dark crumb cake and color that in like that we'll take let's see let's i think we'll leave that white i kind of like that okay now everything has dyes except for our little otter so we're gonna just cut him out with paper snips cut your extra cardstock off and then just get your paper snips and stay right in the middle of your scissor blades and stay right on the outside of your image, okay? And I like to leave just a little bit of a white border for my image. I say it always teases the eye. So the eye is only gonna see the black image. They're not gonna see your, maybe your crooked cutting. Believe me, mine are, mine are crooked. It's okay, it can't be perfect all the time, right? but the eye will only see that black image, the black line. All right, round and round we go, using my opposite hand to turn the paper. I 
and there we go. All right, now let's bring over the cut and emboss machine. And let's get those in the Grove dies. We're gonna use several. We're gonna use the, the mountains. Let's see if we can get these on here together. We've got the mountainscape and we've got the trees. Now I have also gotten a piece of mossy meadow and we're gonna use that with the tree line edge die, if I can get it out of here. Looks like that, so we'll just cut a tree line edge. Looks like my piece is a little bit bigger than I need it, so we'll need to snip that. All right, let's make sure everything is where they need to be. Use your post-it tape here if you're worried about your die slipping out of the way and then having to start over, that's no fun. Okay, so we've got our mountains and our trees, which we will take care of in a minute. And we've got to do our other mountain. Uh-oh, I forgot our trees. Let's cut out our second lighter mountain. Now I am using for my card base, Pool Party cardstock and Country Floral Designer Series Paper. No, nope, Country Woods Designer Series Paper. And I have taken my card base and I have cut off this part right here, okay? This is a two inch piece and this is a two inch piece. And I've got a window sheet and we're gonna get the adhesive. The measurements for this card will be on a free PDF over on my blog, so click the link here on YouTube to go grab it. Ah, cannot get that picked up. All right, now it might be hard for you to see the window sheet, but I'm gonna glue it right there behind, and then I'm gonna do the same thing down here with this piece, but you wanna make sure that this piece is gonna line up down here at the bottom. So here's the adhesive, and I'm gonna match the bottom corners with the bottom corners of the card back. And there we go. Can you see that, how it opens up? Now here are my pieces of the Country Woods Designer Series paper. So we'll put those on, one on the top, one on the bottom. Don't you love this paper? It's just so cute. Okay, now for our little tree line image, I, my paper's a little bit too big, so I'm gonna snip that off like that. And we're gonna hide that back here, like this, okay? So let's put adhesive on the front. And we'll put that right there. And then we're gonna get our darker mountain. And I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna kind of set it over so that you can see those hills right there, but not terribly high because we still want to see the other hills in the back too. So let's just put a little bit of adhesive there and then take our mountains and just kind of attach them like that. Now take your scissors and trim off the edges so that they match. It looks like my window sheet's a little bit too big. There we go. All right, now in the back part of our card, we have a four by five and a fourth inch piece of basic white. And I'm gonna take these mountains and let's see where we need them. I'm gonna put them kind of like right about there, All right? And let's see, maybe we'll scoot them down a little bit so that they'll go all the way. There we go, that's better. So hold them in place and put your adhesive down. Let's check them again, very good. And again, you're gonna trim those edges. Okay, now the last thing we need to stamp is our sentiment. You're a great friend. We're gonna stamp that over here on the left side. And then we're gonna put this on with some dimensionals. One, two, right there. Get your trees and slide your trees behind 
right here. And last but not least, our little guy. And we're gonna put him on with the dimensional down at the bottom. Like that. And then I just felt like we needed a little bit of a bow. So I'm gonna take my linen thread, tie kind of a, a big bow with long loops. Like that. And grab your glue dots. and slide that just right under his tail like that. And there you go. What a fun, cute little card. You're a great friend. Now, of course, change the sentiment if you feel like you need a, a card for a different uh, reason, but still really fun with those mountains on the inside and that see-through window on the front. All right, click the link here on YouTube, go back to my blog, Check out that free PDF, the other two musical jamboree cards, and let me know if you have questions. Happy stamping, everybody. Have fun. Bye-bye.